Hello and welcome to another episode of the Small Town Tourist Podcast where we experience and explore everything that makes small towns great. I'm your host Abby, recording this intro from uh, Terminal 2 at MSP. (laughs) I realized that my podcast did not come out last week with part two from um, Wild Ginger Apothecary. We had Naomi on the podcast. So here is part two. Please enjoy and there will be a podcast featuring the travels from uh, this MSP terminal trip that I'm on. That's coming next week. Stay tuned for that. But for now, enjoy the part two of Naomi from Wild Ginger Apothecary. Thanks for listening. But the the emerging goddess and it has that glycerin, so it's a sweet base, and so it just it's more palatable. And two, you know, some people just don't want the alcohol, which is mm-hmm. totally fine, even though it's a very small amount. But th- this gives them kind of the option between the two. And so I have those formulas with that, and then I have the, the non cycling, which goes over just you just take both of them every day. Okay, like, easy peasy. And then dove into the world of menopause and designed a formula for that. And what's really cool is the people that are on it and have bought it; they're on their second our third kits already because it's working and it's working well and that's a hard transition in life to make Mm -hmm. I come from a family of early menopause Mm -hmm. so like I see it happen and unfold before my eyes and it is a hard thing to go through especially if you are hitting it younger too yep so funny fact is while I was going through all these fun hormone imbalances and you know it's just it's fine everyone says it's fine it wasn't fine um (laughs) but anyway it felt like I was going through menopause like night sweats hot flashes like mood swings dry down there Mm -hmm. like no libido like it was awful I'm like this is this is awful now that I'm balanced because I actually use, and we can talk about it a little bit, but a mirror analyzer. So I actually lab data values. Like it's a urine thing every morning. And that's how, what I use for my birth control essentially now is I track my cycle with actual lab values. Okay. I'm not menopausal. Like my FSH is amazing. My Like I'm, the LH is great. Like I'm not. Like Your I, hormones were just messed I, correct. up. Correct. And so how many women are being told it's normal? Because, you know, perimenopause can start 10 years prior to menopause, which mm-hmm. is fine and great because that's, I mean, it's a huge window. But... Like, there's ways to maybe find out if it's just a hormone imbalance versus actually being in perimenopause. Yeah. And so there's there's different things. So I, those are, like, the main ones. And I do have a, a men's kit, too, that's been working really well for my clients as well. So that's kind of fun. But so I just – that's the hormone kits. And it's just – it's awesome because the feedback I'm getting from these women and men are just wild. So – yeah, that's kind of like, that's where I came to the apothecary, that, apo- back to your apothecary question, <laughs> That that's how that came about. <laughs> oh my gosh, it, it's just incredible what you've learned over just a few short years. Yeah, yeah, like I said, I mean, I'd be reading for anywhere from two to four hours a night, like I just consumed a large amount of information and like that's my gift from God is I am able to read fast, consume and put puzzle pieces together. And so it's just kind of, it's pretty cool. And it's cool that you're taking that gift and turning it into something yeah, that's like, a gift for other people. My, and that's why I, cause there's a lot of really cool herbs out there. Like I said, that back to that like herbal aisle at Fresh Time, like there's a lot of cool stuff, but some have a little bit more interactions than others. Some, um, you gotta be a little bit more careful with, you know, like there's, so I chose the herbs that were the least aggressive for interactions and problems. Again, you always, you know, each person's different, but like I chose the herbs that can help the most people. And that's, what's kind of fun is, and it's working. Like it's actually working better than I anticipated. Cause you know, you have all these ideas in your yeah. head and you get all this. Cause I'm playing marketer. I'm playing like, I'm right. playing everything. When you right run now. a small business, you wear every single hat yeah. you have ever seen in the world. <laughs> and the hardest part is having it in your head to creation like that Mm -hmm. in between phases because I know exactly what I want but I have to figure out how to create it like I learned how to create a website on Shopify like there I mean it's been it's been wild but it's been very rewarding and again it's a passion project but it's just it's so fun and so then (laughs) moving forward with that Okay, so we got our hormones balanced, but now what about stress levels, right? What about bringing cortisol down? Because we all about it. I literally, I'm just starting to go through laser hair removal, Uh and I went through it a few years ago, pre-pandemic, and I laid back down in the chair. Shout out Robin at electrolysis and laser hair removal in Wake Park. Robin's my girl, Uh, (laughs) but she looked at my face and she's like, "What happened?" And I'm like. You tell me. I just had all my lab work done and all came back it's fine. It's normal. It's normal. It's, it's, I, it's, it's normal. normal. <laughs> She's like, have you been stressed? And I'm like, 
extremely why <laughs> she's like that's probably what's causing a lot of this mm-hmm. yeah like my puffy feet like oh my gosh it's stress just does so much crazy shit to it the body it is it is the more you dig into it the more crazy it is too because you're like we're raised in a culture you know like i know there's a phrase going around social media that's like we were told we could be anything what we heard is we have to be everything mm-hmm. and that hit me hard because up until the last few years is now when I've finally given myself grace to sit down. Like before it'd be like someone would walk in and I'd have to quick get up and be busy. Like I just felt guilty if I was doing yes. nothing. And now I really like revel in my time alone and just being quiet at peace, you know, just things like that. And I never could do that before. Just the culture we're raised in. Yes, 100%. Yeah. So how did you put together, like how are you helping with the stress side of things? So the stress support one is really cool. and again like okay so there's passion flower skull cap oat straw linden stevia and vanilla and this one actually tastes really good i could shoot that straight under my tongue without <sighs> making a face um but those literally it's that first beer feeling and what's cool with this is it works right away but it also works over time to kind of and it's not pushing pathways like some pharmaceuticals do it's just really nourishing that adrenal system mm-hmm. and helps you cope with stress a lot better over time and so what i noticed with that is like just even after a few weeks of using it you're just like less <laughs> less chaotic yeah less like tornado yeah exactly um and so I, re- I don't know i really like that one and that's a hot seller too and then sexual wellness is not talked about like no not enough <laughs> i listen to a lot of podcasts about it but like it's crazy and it's so filtered on social media like oh like you can't you gotta put a flame for the eye and libido like tell me about it yeah it, it's hard I and used to so, do burlesque right <laughs> <laughs> and it's I mean it's such a natural human thing and it's over sexualized in the media it's over sexualized just in our culture but like it's fun like it's what we do it's awesome it's how we're all here (laughs) exactly and so like again with that your poor liver if your liver is stressed it really affects libido and hormones and you know men really have issues and that's a huge thing now because if you look at some of the studies out there is the testosterone levels of the men and boys now are so much less than like our even our grandpas wow. and it's because of all the phytoestrogens you know like all the fake estrogens in our food that we eat and the lotions it's the we hormones in the milk correct and like <laughs> i if i'm overly estrogen with the all the fake crap and whatever and i touch a surface my husband can go touch that surface and he'll get a shot of estrogen in there. And like, mm-hmm. so it's really, it's a big deal. And you'll, you know, Huberman Lab talks about all that. Like all these people talk about it. It's a known thing, but really it does affect. And so once you can clean that liver out and get your hormones balanced, it's great. But sometimes like, I mean, Viagra was actually made for women initially. If you look into that. Pump it, the brakes. What? Yep. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was for uh, circulation issues and then it, actually worked really well for women for a few different things i'd have to dig back into the studies to refresh but they found that one of the side effects was erectile dysfunction stuff and guess what it was marketed for Mm -hmm. and so again it's for-profit stuff but so there's there's things out there that can help which is great but i don't i haven't seen anything for women out there have you Mm -mm. nope nope everyone knows viagra but correct what's the women equivalent yeah Uh. and like sorry we we again we are the we take a lot of mental load on we you know we do everything for a lot of things and so sometimes it's hard to like get your mind in that place and so again that really is good to practice things like you know being present in the moment and stress regulation and all that stuff but how do you get the blood flowing like that's where herbs come in and they're they're very they work like it you know you take it one to three hours before you know hanky panky and like just that blood flow is just going yeah. and it's just you don't have to fight for it you know like where you're like come on focus like you know? right like, yeah it's you not be like you're not sitting the there thinking about your to-do list tomorrow know, yeah and so like and everything's not a quick fix you know whatever but like tools for your toolbox right mm-hmm. like I know I want, you know, to feel a little bit more chill tonight. So I'm going to, you know, do some meditation or do, you know, just be present and try some stress support stuff or, you know, whatever it is for you. Talk about a new screwdriver in the toolbox. (laughs) (laughs) It's just nice to have options. Like, because like, that's what we're lacking is options. And so again, going back to all of it is I just, I want to provide tools for people's toolboxes so that they can feel better because... 
damn it, we deserve it. Like, we Being work hard. Being a human is hard. It is hard. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of the, the overview of how I got here. That's incredible. So if people want to, like, try some of this out, they don't really know where to start, how should they begin this journey? And so on my website, I tried to, and hopefully it is pretty easy, but, like, the homepage has, like, a description of, like, who our emerging goddesses and our emerging goddesses are, you know, our young females just coming into, um, you know, having their menstrual periods and, you know, becoming a woman. And then your goddess is your, you know, you cycle, you're, you know, in your prime years, cycling every month. And then your non-cycling goddess, because I love just the goddess, like we're, we're goddesses, yeah. right? And that is the women who, you know, maybe have PCOS and don't cycle regularly uh, and some endo problems, because that is really prevalent mm -hmm. and really hard to manage in the Western medical system. There's, I mean, there's options, but there's a lot of gaslighting there too. And so again, options, work with them, but also maybe try some of this more natural stuff because it's, it's nice to have more tools than you need in your toolbox. And so then that's the non-cycling thing, plus like the IUD, because I didn't have a period on my Marina ID, IUD, which was amazing. I would cycle a little bit, mm -hmm. like I'd tell when I was a little PMSE, but it's hard to know exactly where you are. So that's kind of the purpose of that one. And then the wise woman, because that's, as I'm going and researching like culturally, that's what they're known as, is the wise woman. I'm like, cool. I want to be that. I know, like... It's so cool just thinking like how, again, like those, these tribal women would help and nur nurture these younger women into it. Like, I think there was probably more education back like a couple hundred years ago for women. And because most of us don't know what the menopause symptoms like frozen shoulder can be a menopause symptom. Did you know that? I just learned that. Like, New information <laughs> to me. Know. Like there's so many cool like things that you can learn that just so you're not going what's going on yeah, like, why is my body suddenly not working exactly. how it always did like knowledge is power and like yeah you might not be able to fix it right then and there but at least knowing is half the battle because when you feel hopeless because there's no answers that's when things really suck right because then you, that's then when I'm, you're crying in the minivan <laughs> sometimes you're crying in your minivan and all hope is lost I know. <laughs> so knowledge is power like so yeah, so basically, like those are kind of how that's set up. And men, I mean, sorry, but men are pretty linear and they're pretty easy. So the men's formula is just one, you know, like oh, to be so lucky, yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, they're complicated in other ways, but like when it comes to hormones, they're pretty much they're pretty even yep. keel. And so that's kind of how it's set up with that. Um, and then too, it's you know set up. I have a for him and for her. And the other thing too with it is I don't know about you, but when you have like cycle symptoms, PMS headaches bloating like is my biggest heavy thing bleeding. yeah it's like I put on my pants and they don't fit but they fit a week ago it's like oh exactly. Here, hold on. so like I made a cycle symptom support and so this one is a cramp and bloating <laughs> <laughs> this actually works really well for men and women like if you eat some Mexican and you're feeling a little gassy like it it works really good I love this one I am right this is a gift from above so my my I friend woke up with a leg cramp this morning oh perfect <laughs> That you need magnesium. You need some minerals. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yep. <laughs> but so cycle symptoms. So I got like PMS support because sometimes it's just nice to have it. That has like adaptogenic herbs and things to just help you. And then also to help with um, like motherwort and things. Raspberry leaf is great. Uh, but it has things that just help it suck less, right? And then the cramp and bloating, like I said, that's self-explaining. And then I have one for hormone headaches because I got terrible hormone headaches when I would be all over the place. My teenage years were horrible yes, for that. Yes, And all my friends were too. So there, I don't know if there's something in the water or... Yeah, like everything we were drinking and eating. <laughs> um, and then I have a heavy bleeding, which has like astringent herbs, which kind of curb that heavy bleeding. Okay. So let's say you're like balls to the wall, bleeding and miserable and you know probably, we've all been there yep and like so that's a nice one to use so basically I was looking for something for more acute uses instead of going to grab like the ibuprofen mm -hmm. and things like that in which sometimes I still use it but I use it as a last resort because if I can get rid of my headache you know naturally great mm -hmm. um, if I can you know the, again knowledge is power because the more you know the better it is um, and so on the website I have the cycle stuff too which is kind of nice but a big thing too again the more I learn the more pissed I got because I'm like, why do we <laughs> like water, for example, you'd think water, like drink water, right? A gallon of water a day. Drink, 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 drink. Um, if you don't have minerals and electrolytes in your water, you are literally dehydrating yourself. I would literally, people would make fun of me at work because I would have to pee all the time. And I still do. 
Which is great, right? I drink three of these things a day. Which would be great, but if you're drinking straight water. And that's what it uh-huh. is. And if you're drinking so like city water. what do I put water, in it? Some Celtic salt. Okay. Or Himalayan salt. And you don't even, you can put it in your water. Is Icelandic salt okay? My husband bought some fancy sure. salt on the internet. Yeah, it, just make sure it's like mineral salt. So okay. basically minerals. Or like if you notice like the, it's Fiji water and like smart water or whatever. Yeah. If you look in there, it has added electrolytes and it says for taste, but no, it's like there, I mean, it doesn't taste any different. Right. And so like a little bit of Celtic salt, I'd put some on my tongue and drink it or okay. put it in my water. And it just, so what it does is that, that, um, minerals in there help the water get into the cells. Okay. So I personally used to drink over a gallon of water a day and was peeing every 20 minutes. <laughs> now I drink about a half or a little bit more gallon a day. Um, don't pee near as often. And I actually feel hydrated. That's not so rough on your kidneys. Correct. Because basically, like, if you are stripping yourself from those minerals, uh, your your poor kidneys, like, you just feel icky, right? And we're already nutrient and mineral deficient anyway because, you know, farming practices nowadays just really strip the soil, which, whatever, right, wrong, or indifferent, it's just knowledge is power. If you know that you're not getting as much nutrients in today's food than maybe 200 years ago. Then you got to counter it. Exactly. And so, you know, and there's easy, cheap things to do because it doesn't need to all cost an arm and a leg. It's just knowledge is power. And so that pissed me off when I found that out. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, just adding some just some mineral salt. Fancy just, salt. Yep, okay. Himalayan or Celtic, yeah. whatever. But yeah, that's that's a big deal. And then also magnesium. And so like, I, and I did find out about magnesium as I was going through all this fun stuff. I'm and getting magnesium sprays targeted at me on TikTok lately. Well, no longer do you need them. To, you could try them. <laughs> this woman is a miracle worker. <laughs> so I was taking enough oral magnesium to probably tranquilize an elephant. <laughs> and not all magnesium is created equal. So like there's because f- magnesium needs to attach to something to go in your body and so like there's magnesium glycinate magnesium oxide which is a terrible one and that's mm. the one that you find at like most target walgreens whatever okay. big box stores so really read your ingredients and make sure you're getting a source because that's the other thing is supplements are not regulated and so it's kind of a crapshoot like you it's good that they're not regulated in a way because you know that opens a whole nother can of worms but you really got to make sure you trust right. your source because there's a just... wall of them at walmart and which one's the right and one. like what ones have fillers what ones yeah. were really third party tested things like that and, and so these ones taste like fruit snacks so i'm yep. probably gonna buy those <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, so there's just there's so many things to just kind of take into account, but magnesium is really important, and I'm, everyone's magnesium deficient because magnesium is used up. So as we're stressed out, as we're doing this and that, ah, and our adrenals are working hard, we're using. So magnesium is used as we're okay. going through, and so we're depleting it down. And like eating spinach is great for magnesium. You know the mineral salt thing. Like there's foods that we can eat, but. I think we would have to eat like just way more food to actually get the nutrients we need. Right. And so I like the magnesium spray better because the oral one, you lose so much in the digestive process. And there's going to be a ton of different studies counteracting each other. But as with anything. Exactly. And so you really got to kind of and you got to look who's sponsoring the studies, who's paying for them. That's yeah. the other thing. That kinda keep, well, that's another thing that pissed me off. But anyway, so... <laughs> The oral one worked, and I still take it. Like today, I had a headache, so I actually took some magnesium, had some salt, the mineral salt, and then um, did my little tincture, and it went away. Woohoo! Okay, I didn't have to take an ibuprofen, but I like the magnesium spray because it's a vasodilator, so basically opens up your blood vessels and sucks in the magnesium through the skin. And this one uses a magnesium chloride, so like if you do like uh, magnesium flakes for the bath, that kind of thing, it's that same thing. So what's the best way to use this spray then? Because on TikTok, they're spraying it on their feet. Yeah, so I use it on the bottom of my feet at bed. Okay. I usually sleep like a dead person, like especially if I haven't used it for a while. I'll wake up in the morning and like literally be like, where the hell am I? I'm so What day is it? Yeah, like I slept hard, (laughs) which is great. But like it also helps with anxiety and stuff. So let's say I'm just, you know, I got this really stressful work meeting or something's coming up and I'm just feeling a little jittery. I can take my stress support too, which is fine. But like spritzing this on my chest uh, when I'm really, again, when I'm doing really this every day, through, yeah, yeah, I'll like spray it on my upper body during the day and then my lower body at night. But because it's a vasodilator, <laughs> it opens things up. Don't put it on freshly shaven skin. It burns. Ooh. Yep. So because a lot of people on TikTok, you'll see them like, oh, it's my new deodorant. And yeah. they're spraying the armpits, which oh, the, cool. The burn. Yeah. Well, the I burn. did that after I shaved and I had a dull razor to begin with. So like, I'm Ooh. just 
it's it's like home alone you know when he does yeah. <laughs> after she pulls it. so um yeah i'm spraying i'm spraying i'm spraying i'm like eh, five second delay and i was like oh my god <laughs> it hurts it burns in that case you just throw some lotion over top and dilute it out it's fine but i'm like sometimes the tingle's kind of nice you know sometimes a little burns good sometimes it's kind of fun um but yeah no try this and let I'm me know how you so like excited. it i'm excited because that that is that's awesome like full disclosure for all the podcast listeners i didn't totally dig through this box that she gave <laughs> me so like this was not like planned that i was, was going to mention really bloating funny. that i was going to mm-hmm. mention magnesium like just the universe provides sometimes yep. when you need it to <laughs> when you stop pushing and let things be that's what i've noticed this past year I've stopped trying to like push, push, push and be in control because you just got to let it go sometimes. And things just, it's wild what things work out as. Mm-hmm. It's kind of cool. It's very true. Um, and then the other thing too, for like the magnesium piece, this has uh, dead sea salt and magnesium flakes, but then I added rose petals. Um, and so because of the, the herbs, so herbal bath soaks, if you look back in history, like, um, after birth or this that and the other thing like they put herbs like a yoni steam or yoni i don't know if i'm saying that right like there's super cool things you can do with herbs that's not just ingesting them you know courtney kardashian did that on the last season or the one of the previous seasons when she was trying to get pregnant oh yep 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 and so like the rose is just really calm it smells really good but um you know our poor septic systems can't really (laughs) handle that so i just do like this little muslin bag thing and then you can put it in there and it's like uh, seeping a tea bag yeah. to drink, but you're putting it in the tub and, and letting so your body just yeah, and so it. and just transdermally, if you can do anything through your skin, it's so much better. But on the other side of that coin is all the poisons. Think about all the poisons you put on mm-hmm. your skin, like your shampoos, your conditioners, your soaps, your lotions, your candles, like. Everything is just, it absorbs through your skin and yeah. you really have to be cautious about that. And so, uh, but on the good things is if you can put it on your skin, it's really helpful. Oh my gosh. I love it. Isn't so it many cool? wonderful goodies in this box. Let's see what else I gave you. It here. like never ends. Oh, okay. So this is my new friend from TikTok that made my soap. So that was really cool. I, I just, I don't know, there's so many cool women out there. And as soon as you're like non-competitive and you're just open to support people, people just come in droves. Like mm-hmm. it's super cool. And this is really cool so another thing i learned through all my research is that your belly button is home to like thousands of nerve endings which totally makes sense when you think about it because that's that was crazy because our... mine's home to a rhinestone oh, barbell rhinestone that i put there cowboy. when i was 15. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like that was our life source right you know in the womb right. like whatever and so yeah there's just a ton of things that travel all over and so i read a lot about like because castor oil is the big craze right now too. yeah i've seen that on tiktok and, and it's awesome castor oil is amazing but you just don't go start slathering it everywhere like just kind of again knowledge is power and so if you put a little bit of castor oil and don't like douse it on in your belly button that really actually helps because it actually seeps in and helps dissolve things like castor oil penetrates deeper than any other oil and so anything that you can infuse with castor oil really gets in there and people also do like castor oil packs so they put like um, organic cotton soaked castor oil over their liver and then they just kind of wrap it and just hold it and so that castor oil gets in there just like does its little thing and helps like a ton of things but i will say like someone with pcos maybe a lot of fibroids endo issues things like that what they'll notice when they put a ton of castor oil in their belly button is like they'll heavy bleed Ooh. for like a long time but my friend that actually made the soaps from tiktok she was using this and it's not full castor oil it's got other oils in it and it's got different hormone balancing stuff that i infused she started like heavy bleeding too and it was only for a certain amount of time it's almost like the body was like purging it out so you really got to listen to your body and kind of figure it out i've never done that but my innards aren't quite as (laughs) as beat up as maybe someone else's and so this is really nice just to um, and I did it in a roller bottle, so it's okay. real easy. So but you just in your belly button, and it's just another way, another tool for the toolbox. Right? I love it. Yeah. So my toolbox is like overflowing yeah. right now. This is amazing. And like, what I love is that when I'm looking at these ingredient lists, tree berry, raspberry leaf, rose, castor oil, like. These are things that when the words go into my head, I can picture them. Exactly. Which is a mission that I've had for this year. I decided I want to try to like be more cognizant of mm-hmm. like the labels that I'm reading because I have a dairy allergy. Mm-hmm. So my go-to thing is always just look at the label. Does it say contains milk? Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't, I'm like, great, I can eat it. Wonderful. Put it in the cart. Yep. But 
just because it says doesn't contain milk and it's not going to kill me doesn't mean it's good for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm really trying to be better about that in 2024. So there is an app that's free and it's called Yuka and it has a little carrot on it. Oh, okay. And this was fun. And you actually can scan things. It doesn't do everything, like some supplements and stuff like that. Um, kind of stays out of that realm. But as you're shopping for shampoos, conditioners, processed food, things like that, you scan it, and it tells you out of 100 how good it is. So, okay. like, for example, this bubbler is 39 out of 100, and it says additives. There's eight to avoid. And then it says there's one hazardous, one mu So then you can click on it, and it tells you, what the additive is that's hazardous and what it does. So this one affects the central nervous system. There's oh. a ton of things that like affect hormones, hormone yeah. imbalances. This one is also to be, uh, believed to promote hyperactivity and attention deficit disorders in children. Like that, we're drinking that right. with that. And that's a known thing. And so then it will also recommend alternatives that are which is awesome healthier. because it can tell you no don't do that mm -hmm. but if it doesn't give you a solution to the problem you're facing yep. and i love this well so some things again you got to take with a grain of salt because it'll say something's not awesome because it maybe has a high calorie or high but when you're eating for nutrition like we need calories it's very important it's how we stay mm -hmm. alive so you got to take it with a grain of salt if it's not super great for the ranking because of the calorie or the like fat content as long as the fat content is like a good source because we need fat right so, especially women like fats drive cholesterol production which helps drive our hormone production mm -hmm. like it's a super super important thing but you know your non-processed butters your um, olive oil like ghee things like mm -hmm. that like those are good fats for yep. us we need that Avocados. and so, so just kind of take it with a grain of salt when you're looking at it but this <laughs> again you go through the grief processes right so as you're scanning things you're like everything's trying to kill me mm -hmm. uh, and my daughters and I were going through and scanning and she was freaking out she's like we need to throw all the I'm like no, no. so this is where the balance comes Moderation. into play yeah. <laughs> I said we use this as a tool to make better choices moving forward so now we need new conditioner new lotion so again chapstick Burt's Bees we were scanning on that target oh don't tell me it's bad I am addicted to that stuff it actually depends so like the one is it huckleberry one rated way low because of whatever additives were okay. in there for it but the other one rated really high I'm like OG plain Burt's Bees don't give me no flavor yeah so sc like scan and it's super cool because it just kind of tells you oh my gosh so again knowledge is power so I was telling my daughters I'm like you know you can't avoid toxins mm -hmm. like you cannot live in a bubble like that is not how it's uh, not realistic no it's not real and so life. like after you have your little freak out situation you just use this as a tool moving forward to make better choices which as you make better choices and you start this or that you know you're choosing something that maybe has less endocrine disruptors again tool in your toolbox you're going to start feeling better over time by making those choices but to make the choices you have to have the knowledge mm -hmm. so that is the biggest catchphrase is knowledge is power and balance is the key because we're living in a crazy world and you can't fight it yep just kind of gotta go with it sometimes yep. so i really like that and so actually on yeah for all the audio listen listeners she came with flashcards <laughs> and I like did. cute flashcards i did i know it's in yours so you might have to go oh, here no so I have, and this is on the website too. So I actually have free downloads. So like those, the phases oh, perfect. and the stuff, you can actually go on the website and download it for free. I'll put a link in the show notes so yeah. everyone can go and download the pretty flashcards. It's super <laughs> fun because like, it's, again, these girls, like we owe it to the upcoming women and women like me, like who just in my thirties figured out there was four phases to my cycle. Like, come on, we owe it to other women to share knowledge yep. and to got to pass it down, help help people. And so on that is this resources one here, and that has that yucca and like what it is and why I should use it kind of thing, and different supplements that are good because again we're we're lacking in a lot of things. Um, omegas is great for hormones. Um, I really like the Mary Ruth organics that you can find on Amazon. They seem to test really well. They have okay. the third party testing. And there's other ones like I have specific ones with specific practitioners that I like. And so, again, it's giving people the knowledge and the tools to make those informed decisions. And then also the other thing that pissed me off to learn <laughs> is period products. Right, oh your yeah cotex and all those what just filled with crap <laughs> they have forever chemicals in them mm -hmm. 
Do you know why we probably had terrible periods growing up? Like I, I literally would have to pull my car over because my cramps were so bad. Oh. Like I was a hazard on the road, not just because I was a 16 year old girl driving. Like I literally had to pull over from cramps. Like that is not normal. No. And the only solution was to put them on birth control, right? Like, come on. But this, I like, it's a salt, S-A-A-L-T yeah, brand. Yep. First of all, their marketing is top notch. So it's good. Freaking they hilarious. They got me. They got me, girl. I, I watched a YouTube ad for like, it was like a five minute one and I was, I was sucked in. Yeah. And I'm like, this is the coolest Every place second. ever. Yes. And so just having that knowledge and knowing like, so now I only buy organic. I really like the Honey Pot oh, yep. brand. Um, they have like herbal infused pads. And it has like mint and aloe and whatever. It kind of feels like a Mentos for your hoo ha. So just <laughs> disclaimer, because I didn't realize you that. You don't at want first. a Mentos in your underwear. I, honestly, at first you're like a little shocked, and then you're like, I, I kind of like that. You this know, is it's, the vibe. Kind of like the sting with the magnesium. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're more messed up than we think. I don't no. know. Um, we just like to feel. But when you don't understand that was a thing, like, and you, yeah, that, that was a little shocking. Uh, but just again, moving forward, it's just so nice to know mm-hmm. because. A These are not things that were taught to us when correct. we were and, in health class. And and because our periods were seven to 10 days and heavy, we used for over 25% of the month, we were using toxic stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. While we're eating our, you know, mac and cheese with yep. our, you know, all our highly processed snacks. Sour and, cream and onion chips dipped into Kraft mac and yes. cheese. Yes. Oh, I mean, that sounds delicious, but Feral. it's probably <laughs> part of our issue with yes. our hormones. <laughs> Um, and then just uh, period tracking app. So I brushed a little bit before on that Mira. So I was trying to figure out ways, especially with my girls. So they there's different apps out there. And there's one called the Agenda Period. I just downloaded that. She I follow her on social media. And she, oh, it's the Agenda, it's called. And it's super cool because you can actually sync the information in there with your Google Calendar. Oh, So really? it'll tell you what phase you're going to be on or what phase you are on. And then so if you're going to plan something next month, you know, and you want to know like, okay, maybe I don't want to be in my luteal phase when yeah. I'm doing it. Or like, like I'm going on vacation. Yeah, I don't want my period on vacation. Yeah. And so now I'm going to help plan. So like that's super cool. That she, And it's free, again, that is in here. And so my girls are using that one. And then, like I said, I use the Mira. And I'm not affiliated with them. I just really love it. It is a little bit more expensive to buy it, but it's like this little egg-sized thing. And it's like sticks, like little pregnancy sticks. Okay. So you collect the first urine of the morning and um, the stick measures your progesterone, your estrogen, and your luteinizing hormone, actual lab values for the urine piece. And then it will track it and it uses the AI technology to kind of, so I know exactly when. It gives you a chart. Yep. That's crazy. Which is awesome when you're working with your like page data. It's like, I literally could print this out and we could go over it to figure out where I'm at, where I need to optimize, what supplements would be good. What's going wrong? What's going well? Exactly. And so it's just, it's amazing. And so like through this whole journey, like I said, I had seven to 10 day heavy periods. Like it was bad. And I am down to three and a half days or less with no cramps or bloating for the most part. Damn girl. Yeah. Like this last cycle threw me for a loop because I had that mystery virus that was going around where it wasn't COVID. It wasn't Mm-hmm. RSV, it I had it. Yep. And it, I mean, it was a, it was the worst month it ever. It was terrible. It literally lasted a month. Yep. And luckily I had some things in place. So I think it was shortened a little bit. So I had two weeks of hell, but it was really fun to track. I'm, such a, <laughs> I'm a data nerd. Like I love yeah. science, right? So it was kind of fun to track because like my LH surges were really healthy, really good looking, right? Well, this last cycle as I'm, you know, recovering from this death virus, <laughs> I had like no surge like it was just like this little so my body's probably like I don't even know if I kicked an egg out because it's probably like whoa I'm busy I'm like trying to keep you alive I, at the exactly. moment so our body is super cool it's intuitive it does what it needs to do without us even knowing yeah. what it's doing and so it's kind of fun to track it because I'm like oh that's probably why I didn't because I'm dying you know like <laughs> this is where I was sick on the couch <laughs> yo and then you can kind of tell like is my progesterone getting to the levels it needs to be or is low progesterone causing my skin to feel weird and night sweats and you know all these menopause like it's right. just fun to track track and then too because this is another thing I didn't learn in my 30s after I had three kids you hear two ways so like in high school they said don't have sex you will get pregnant you will die you mm-hmm. know like ah. whereas then you hear oh you can only get pregnant one or two days out of the month um nah, no we need a little bit more information than that right like no wonder well, people what are one or two days <laughs> no wonder people are so scared of like natural family planning and things like that is there's such a fail rate mm-hmm. because we're not because we're not informed. educated on what exactly it means. and so like when you have your lh surge you know 24 to 48 hours then you kick the egg out and you know whether it's sitting there but another important thing to track is cervical mucus because 
five days usually before. So the once your cervical mucus turns like where you're not like a de- Sahara Desert down there and it's a little bit more like, hey, that is when sperm can live for up to five days. Okay. And so now you got a little guy hunkering down waiting for the egg to come. Well, that now, so your really fertile period is up to seven yeah, days. Yeah, that makes a week. If you know when you're exactly, you're ovulating. So that's where it's kind of like a, you know, Russian roulette for some people. <laughs> and that's why it's scary. Mm-hmm. But like for me, for this, because like, I love my children, but I just don't want any more. And so I just, I want that. And so it's like 80 bucks a month for the stick. So after that initial purchase or whatever, it's 60 to 80. And I test more than I need to. So it's probably less than that. And they have all sorts of sales. But I like this one because it's just, it takes the guesswork out more. Yeah, it's real hardcore data. Yep. And so now I know after my LH surges, one to two days later, I got a progesterone spike. Now I know that I kicked an egg out and I wait another day until my fertile period's over. Game on. Like, yeah. woohoo, you know? Oh my gosh, that's crazy that they we're living in an age yes. where things like this exist. Exactly. It's just the lack of education and knowledge. And so for me, I love this app for that purpose because if, if I'm going to spend 20 to $40 on a copay for a birth control prescription, why not spend a little bit more? And like I said, once I got my IUD out, like I had my ba- my hormones better balanced and I got that out. Let me tell you, chef's kiss. Like it has been so much better. Like, and I enjoy knowing when my luteal phase is because then I plan more chill things. You can adjust, I enjoy, yeah. yeah, like I like my estrogen surges. I really do because that week where I'm feeling really good, I get a lot of shit done. Like it's well, and awesome. we're meant to have them. Yep. And actually, now that I don't, I don't have crippling periods anymore. I actually don't mind my menstrual phase. Like it's super cool. Mm-hmm. Like it's empowering, and it's something that should be shared. Yeah, for sure. So, well, I'm happy to share it on this podcast. (laughs) Seriously, thank you so much for coming over for all the goodies. Like, this has been wonderful beyond measure. Yeah, I ramble. (laughs) It's a podcast. You're Mm. supposed to ramble. (laughs) Maybe this is my calling. (laughs) Girl, I can help you with that. Yeah, right. (laughs) Seriously, thank you so much. Where can everyone find you? So I do have all the socials, but uh, Wild Ginger Herbal Apothecary, it's kind of a mouthful, but that that's my website. So www.wildgingerableapothecary.com. Um, I'm on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, but for actual purchasing wise, it's the website. Sweet. Well, and I'll make sure I have everything linked in the show notes below, but seriously, thank you. This was an absolute was treat. Thank you so much for checking out another episode of the Small Town Tourist Podcast. If you're looking for more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at the Small Town Tourist. You can also check out the Facebook page and the blog, thesmalltowntourist.com. And if you know of something cool that I, you think I should check out, don't be afraid to send me an email, abby, A-B-B-E-Y, at thesmalltowntourist.com. And that was my mom sniffling. I'm sorry. <laughs> Want me to not sniffle? <laughs>